I'm gonna go take another crack at Whitman. You've been in there like five times. What are you gonna do? Annoy him into talking? Ha ha. Two, three, four. <laughs> Didn't work. Thank you. Did not work. Well, I guess we did just spend 48 hours locked in here together. Holy crap. What? Locked in here together. So we will be filing a wrongful arrest suit against the NYPD. And when I win, I'm going to buy Club Torque, put a statue of Jake Peralta right in the middle of the dance floor. First off, that's a terrible threat. I would love to have a statue of myself in the middle of a dance club. Second, <clears throat> do me a favor, take a look at this picture and tell me what you see. You and Regis Philbin? Awesome, right? Surprisingly down to earth guy and definitely not the picture I meant to show you. But take a look at this. That's right, it's you and your old cellmate, Marcus Cole. And here he is again, outside the jewelry store. The two of you planned this together in prison. You taught him your ammo, he pulled off the robbery, you got yourself an alibi, and you split the loot. Oh, man, I can't believe he caught us. Of course he did. Peralta is the best. Aw, oh, thanks, Reg. That's enough. Yeah, I got to work on my Regis. Anyway, see you in jail, Whitman. I guess that's your new best friend now, Santiago. Emphasis on Iago, backstabber. I'm surprised you've read Othello. What the hell's Othello? I'm calling you the parrot from Aladdin. Guys, my water just broke. Don't worry about that. We'll just get you another one. Oh, you mean your body water. That's much worse. Yeah, I really wish you'd show up. I gotta go to the bathroom so bad. It's like a third time today, man. What is going on with you? Oh, Amy freaked out because I told her I never drink water, so now she's making me drink eight glasses a day. It's like there's water and soda, there's water and coffee, there's little pools of water on pizza. That's grease, Jake. Well, it's wet, isn't it? Okay. Ah! Y'all ready for this? You know what I'm saying? Terry Jeffords, allow me to introduce to you our murder victim, the not dead Nate Dexter. What the hell is going on? Right? Sophia wasn't lying. I was just not asking the right questions. She hadn't seen her husband in eight years, but she was positive there's no way that he killed Dexter. That's when it occurred to me. No one killed him. Hey, Nate, just talking about how you're alive. Yeah, I'm alive. But whose melted torso did we find? Sophia's husband. Yes! Sophia and Dexter were having an affair. Husband found out, Nate killed him. Now I'm telling my friend about how you killed that guy. It was for love. Cool motive, still murder. Also, you remember that severed finger? Check this out. Hey, Nate, show us your hands, please. Oh, -ho, right? Cut it off himself. How screwed up is that? <laughs> anyway, I asked all my CIs if they had dealings with a nine-fingered man. Unsolvable case? Solved. Woo! This is so unfair. I've lived in this building 15 years, and then all of a sudden they decide they're going co-op with zero warning? It seems illegal they didn't tell you this was happening. Well, it's possible I missed a letter, but I doubt it. Ooh, let's check the mail tub. Mail tub? Nope. No, no. See? It's impossible to find anything in here. It's not my fault. Detective, we'd like you to go undercover and help us with the investigation. OK, the answer is yes. The details are, my name is Duncan Buck. I was raised on an oil rig by 90 men and one prostitute. We'd like you to be yourself. Even better. This could be very dangerous. So please, take some time and No need. I'm in. Eyes closed, head first, can't lose. I don't think that's the expression. Can you just let me have this? You guys act like this is your decision to make. Like, the woman doesn't even exist in this equation. Well, this woman? Wait, Amy, shut up. Excuse me? I mean, I'm so sorry. You were making a totally valid point about gender equality, but I just thought of something really important, so I'm going to hang up on you. OK, love you, bye. It wasn't Russo or his sons. It, it was, was the daughter. daughter. Hello, everyone. Guess who just solved a 20-year-old unsolvable case? Wait. What? You guys figured out who pulled the first Sussex Bank job? Yeah. We realized we never checked the daughter's alibi. She wasn't at the softball trip. She had access to the plans, and then she just confessed. That's right. We arrested a woman today because we are feminists. We must solve one of Vin's puzzles to enter. Rearrange the letters of this phrase to reveal a place in the world. Meet a brainier stud, eh? Oh, come on. There's no place with that many letters in it. I mean, most places are like four letters, you know, park, mall, dump. United Arab Emirates. You may enter. Oh. Uh, you must each answer a puzzle. Oh, great. Unscramble the letters in this phrase to reveal the name of a film based on a classic novel. Okay. Sad anus loser, I go in. You know, I feel like these puzzles are actually very pointed. Forget it. I got this. Uh, A-R-A. 
that's all soft. And Amy's parents look down on me. They talk about me right in front of my face in Spanish because they don't think I'm smart enough to learn another language. But I've been taking classes, and now I can understand all the hurtful things they've been saying. And how did that help? Well, now I know they think I'm short, and I was able to do some research and find that 1940 census that proves I'm above average in height. For 1940? Yeah, I'm taller than the greatest generation. It doesn't matter. I told you not to lie. What were you thinking? I thought it would work. And I wanted to be the one that got him. Is this about your ego? Are you that desperate for everyone to know how great you are? It's not about everyone, okay? It's just, I wanted you to know. Oh my God. I got it. He's not answering any questions. That's okay, I have no questions, that's right. I'm about to monologue, son. You better make it quick, you only got eight minutes. All right, then let me paint you a picture. I'm Philip, a successful periodontist that's become addicted to diazepam, a sedative I take because I'm junkie scum. Also, for real, addiction is a disease I would be super empathetic if you hadn't murdered a man. What is the point of this? I'll get there. So, one day I'm working late when my boss, Robert, surprises me. He found out I was stealing meds. Again, junkie scum. Also, again, not your fault. There's a major genetic component to addiction. He says he's gonna file a police report. I could lose my license. We fight and something in me just snaps. So I grab the first thing I can find, and I hit him with it. You still have no murder weapon. I do now. Here's a pic I found on Yelp of the surgical suite six months ago, and here is a shot that our crime scene photographer took of the same room two weeks after the murder. Notice any differences? We're not answering that. That's all right, I can just tell you myself. The Yelp shot has six of these heavy-looking glass awards from the Brooklyn Periodontic Society in the background, whereas this shot only has five. What happened to number six? Murdered Robert with it. I did. You lost all control and you bludgeoned him to death. There must have been blood everywhere, but you got lucky. You were in the surgical suite. It can be sterilized. You never would have gotten away with it in your carpeted office. That's not what happened. Don't say anything more, Philip. And your office manager would have heard all of the screaming, but she was at her grandson's play. Lucky again. You're wrong. You put Robert's body into a wheelchair and shoved it in the elevator. It's a miracle there wasn't blood everywhere. That's not true. Now you're in the garage with a corpse. You panicked and left your phone in your office, and you don't have your car keys, but Robert's are in his pocket, so you put him in his car and you take off. No. You can't believe what you've done. No. Philip. You're flustered. You have no GPS, so you just start driving. No. Philip. Next thing you know, you're in the Pine Barrens, and it hits you. Your uncle's cabin. He has a place there. You're the luckiest son of it a bitch. It wasn't bitch. luck. Yes, it was. You got lucky at every turn. No. I knew exactly where I was driving. I left my phone in the office on purpose. I was in a surgical suite by design, and I didn't use some glass award that any idiot would clearly see was missing. I made a rod out of a special dental polymer, killed him with it, then melted it back down. It's already in the patient's mouth, son. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn! And that is three oh dams. Oh, damn! Oh, fresh air. Well, I don't say that a lot. There's one thing I still don't understand. Did you know you had the wrong murder weapon? Oh, excellent question, sir. Yes. I spotted the missing dental award when I first took the case. I asked around weeks ago. It turns out a cleaning lady knocked it over and shattered it. Then why did you run in there like that? Because in talking to you, I realized what Philip's worst fear actually was, that we would think he was just some dummy that got lucky. Right. He had planned the perfect crime, and it killed him when you said he was sloppy and impulsive. He needed us to know how smart he was. Why? Like someone else I know. Yep. Kevin. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Peralta. Thank you, sir. Now, let's go get some sleep. Hey, guys. My goodness, we're almost late for work. Oh, well, in that case, good morning, sir. Good morning, Peralta. God, I love this job. Hey.